Hi, my name is Georgi Radulov and I will make now a podcast about back off. So back off is a mode of operation uh, for our devices in, uh, in an in integrated circuit in which we intentionally reduce their power in order to improve their linearity. However, in the context of our course about uh, uh, data converters, specifically the part concerning digital normal converters, this can have adverse effects because reducing power means changing the effective relative segmentation balance between the binary LSB part and the unary LSB part. So let's see how it works. So the context of um, the application context is of course uh, the transmitter. So we have here uh, some traditional transmitters starting from digital, having a digital to analog converter, uh, some uh, reconstruction filters, a mixer and a power amplifier which generates a lot of power, uh, some additional filters and you have the antenna. So this is how um, the most most of uh, today's uh, wireless uh, uh, transmitter work. Uh, for mobile communication you are all familiar with these antennas, big antennas, which you can see them uh, in, the, in the cities uh, um, and uh, these are big because they generate a lot, of, a lot of power and you need power in order to be able to reach targets which are far uh, how it works, we will see uh, uh, in the next slide. Um, so this is a traditional transmitter and we have uh, a novel version of the transmitter which is based on uh, a mixing DAC. So all uh, this component mixing DAC uh, uh, does is combining the functions of D2A converter and the mixer together in a mixing DAC. So now a component of mixing DAC interfaces, the component of mixing DAC interfaces directly to the uh, power amplifier, which makes possible to control the power of the power amplifier directly from the digital domain. Simply reduce the amplitude of the uh, input digital signal and you'll provide less input power for the power amplifier and hence you can bring the power amplifier in a back off, back off mode in an attempt to improve its linearity. But as we've seen in our podcast, we have to beware of the segmentation that is used in the mixing DAC. Now, um, why we need power? Why we need power in the signal? So power is some, one of the major properties of, of, of the signal, next to its quality, of course. And um, basically, the louder you talk, the farther you are heard. So imagine yourself being um, in the nature, on a hill, and you want to talk to your friend, which is on the next hill. What you do, you naturally talk louder. And uh, why is that? Um, this can be formalized uh, by the link budget, which looks at the power received in the receiver. So how strong, how strong signal your friend on the hill can hear. So the power received is equal here to the power transmitter, which is logical. The, the harder you talk, the more power you submit. Then you have uh, the gains of the antennas. Um, what you can do is basically put your hands around the mouth and in this way you channel, you channel the power in the direction that uh, you want, where the power is needed. You don't waste power in directions that, uh, that you don't want to waste. Um, optionally, your friend on the hill can also put 
hands around ears, and in this way it applies effectively gain in the receiver antenna because it connects uh, more power um, <coughs> and channels it into the uh, ear. So this is the component for the antenna gain. Um, this is uh, uh, so, so I, I gave the analogy of uh, talking, uh, but in practice in electronics, uh, what you have is uh, horn antennas, dish antennas, phase arrays, which effectively realize um, antenna gain. Then you have various losses. We have to subtract the losses from the power because this is this is this power which is which is lost. Um, then imagine that on the hill there are a lot of a lot of trees. So all trees will absorb a little bit from the power of your signal, so that the your your message will arrive weaker uh, at uh, your friend in, on the hill. Um, this will be different, of course, on a playing hill. Um, so these are the losses that we have in our components. Uh, the efficiencies, um, heating, etc. Now we have also this component, which is the free path loss, and this has to do with uh, the distance r and the way uh, a wave propagates. Um, so, if, if if you're a point which transmits this power, you have of course certain directivity, but effectively this is the directivity then the power wave will propagate like this. It becomes broader, 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 broader. Which means that for a given square of area, there will be less and less fluxes, less and less um, units of power uh, if this uh, uh, square is farther from you, because the cloud grows like this. Um, so the farther your communication value is, uh, the more the free path loss. The main message from uh, this link budget equation for the power receive is that it directly depends on the power transmitted. This means that you want to transmit a lot of power because uh, your voice will be heard farther and also can be distinguished from the noise better. There is a surrounding noise, the harder your signal is, the better the signal to noise ratio. But this is not the only thing. It should be also understood what you're saying. So not only the um, signal that is received should be sufficiently powerful, but it should be also sufficiently good. So the quality of the signal should be good. Um, and what is the quality of the signal? So basically, uh, it's linearity. Generally, from signal theory, uh, the amount of information that we can uh, um, submit depends on uh, the bandwidth of the signal bandwidth that we occupy to submit our message and uh, its purity in the amplitude uh, uh, domain. Um, so in um, wireless applications, uh, usually we'll take some band in which we'll be licensed to submit information. Um, if we get this license, we have to comply with certain regulations. And these regulations define the band mask, which effectively says that uh, you may not submit power outside your assigned frequency band uh, above certain level. Yeah? So whatever you do, you do it here, but not outside the band. And this is regulated by the band mask. So if you have a message, a wide band signal, uh, in frequency domain, this is uh, uh, the power. If your components are not linear, what you have is distortion. And you have, um, if you have m multiple tones in your in your signal, 
the uh, harmonic distortion will intermodulate. So what you will have is intermodulation distortion products, which will lead to this spectral regrowth. So you have your message here, which is a wide band signal and frequency domain, and in the side of your uh, um, broadband signal, you have a spectral regrowth. The more nonlinear components you have in your circuit, the more spectral regrowth you will have. In order to comply with the uh, mask uh, requirements, you will need to reduce then the signal bandwidth. Uh, however, and, and, and you, you reduce also the amount of information that you can uh, send, but you have to do this in order to comply with the mask uh, requirements. Another thing that you have to do is to reduce the amplitude of your signal. In this way, the whole uh, um, emitted power in frequency domain will go down and you can comply just with the mask uh, requirements. So you did two things which are unfavorable. First, that you reduced your signal bandwidth, and second, you reduce your signal power in order to comply with the mask requirements. So what do we want then? We want, of course, large signal bandwidths to transmit more information, and we want to be very efficient in uh, um, the utilization of our spectrum because we want to submit as many bits as possible per given hertz. So this here, uh, the amplitude resolution, we want it to be very good because then in amplitude we can call to more information. So we need high spectral purity resolution in amplitude and the intermodulation distortion we want it to be low. In this way we can increase <coughs> the utilized signal bandwidth and we can increase also the power. And if we increase the power, yeah, we will reach further targets. Now, um, there is clearly a trade-off now between power and linearity. If we want to submit more information, we want to be linear. Then we improve the quality of the information. Um, if we want to reach further targets, we want more power and also um, we want to improve the quality of, uh, of the signal through improving the uh, signal to noise ratio so for a given constant noise more power means of the signal means better signal to noise ratio but there is a trade-off between power and linear you cannot have both um, first of all please recall something which you are familiar with is which is the, the small signal uh, uh, model and the small signal approximation in which we linearize our circuits. So small signal means linear. The smaller the signal, the more linear um, the electronic system is. And this comes from this polynomial. This is just a standard polynomial by which we can model most of the electronic components memory less uh, electronic components. So what we have here is that the output signal passes through a certain transfer characteristic which can be described by the polynomial. So we have A0 is the zero order term which is the uh, offset. This is no problem, this is a linear term. A1 is the gain of the linear term X and then after that, this is usually what we want, A1, and after that A2 a3 and 4, we have the higher order terms, and these are the nonlinear distortion components. So now you can see is if, if x is small, then this becomes irrelevant. It's so small as a small number, or a second power is even smaller number. However, if x grows, these harmonic distortion components will grow and will reduce the quality of the signal. The spectrum will grow 
will increase and then we have problems with satisfying the mask requirements. So let's take uh, a power amplifier as an example, but these effects generally you can see also in other uh, circuits, electronic circuits. And then consider the effect of compression. Effect of compression is when the harmonic distortion terms become so large that they now dominate the transfer. So this is a power amplifier in which we have uh, an input power level and output power. As the signal is at the input is small, we're in the linear region here. This is the gain. This is the term A1. Signal is small, these are negligible. However, beyond certain level of the input signal, these guys, the nonlinear term, start becoming dominant. And the uh, effective transfer that we have between the input and the output bends. It compresses. So this would be then the linear response. If we had only a one term, this is what we want. But the actual response will be this one because of the nonlinear terms. So this degrades so much the quality of the components of, 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 of the signal, the quality of the signal, that our message that we send is no longer understood or we violate the signal masks. And this is bad. So we need to do something. We have to linearize. And then what um, is uh, what is done is that you back off. So you intentionally reduce the power that you submit. So from this power you go to this power, but then you guarantee that you satisfy the mask requirements and your message is understood. So this is the basic definition of a back off in which we reduce the power of our signals in order to get linearity. However, for DAC segmentation, this has consequences. So for digital to analog converters, we use segmentation in order to balance between linearity uh, and efficiency of implementation. So we have the binary types of converters, which are very efficient, but they suffer from matching errors and they degrade uh, the linearity. And we have the unary approach, in which we use the same unit elements, uh, in, uh, and this is very good for their matching, very good for the overall linearity of the D2A converter, but it's not efficient. So, you know, in binary we use components, units, which are scaled down by a factor of two. So we use uh, like, like one, uh, weights, one, uh, two, four, eight, sixteen, etc., etc., etc. And then with the combination of these weights, we construct in an efficient way uh, our output. However, this scaling by a factor of two, two, four, eight, is problematic. It cannot be realized in practice very accurately. This is why in a segmentation we would use um, the binary coding for the least significant bits, for the less significant bits, and for the more significant bits we will use unary coding. In this way we we'll balance between the binary and the unary coding. Uh, so um, <coughs> Unary uh, units are easily uh, matched. Well, systematic mismatch of binary units, if you don't scale between the bits exactly by a factor of two, this may degrade the spurious free dynamic range of the DAC converter. So this can deteriorate the linearity of the DAC and will. Um, and then, usually as like, uh, uh, um, uh, what we recommend uh, to how to choose the level of segmentation, how many bits to be implemented uh, in a binary way, how many bits in a unary way. Uh, we recommend to do this uh, by uh, simulations and looking at how well you can make, in, as a designer, the scaling at the most significant bits of the binary with respect to the unary uh, uh, bit. 
So you have the binary bit and then the most significant binary bit is just half of it. How well you can do this half? Then you make a design and you consider, for example, a simple choice. Like uh, around 50% of segmentation and then you consider a little bit more, a little bit less. Say you, you wonder whether you would have in your converter uh, 7 bits binary, 8 bits binary and, or 9 bits binary. Uh, then uh, uh, you implement uh, uh, just directly uh, these, uh, these bits and then you look, for example, how well you can have the matching uh, of the scaling of two. So in this particular example, the matching for the wire uh, capacitance deviation from an ideal, so this is ideal matching and this is a little bit less, a little bit more. Uh, but here you can have uh, uh, something else, not only the, 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 the wire capacitance, you can have just directly the, uh, the current generated by a transistor, for example, whatever. On this scale here, we have the linearity of the DAC as measured in spurious free dynamic range within a reduced boundary. And we have our targets, say, for example, 85 uh, dB we have to achieve. Then what you see is that for the same amount of mismatch that you have left or right of the wire capacitance, depending on how um, relevant is the bits chosen, how significant the bit is, you have different impact on the overall performance. If the bit is chosen to be the seventh bit, which is uh, a less significant bit, then you have for a given, for a given, uh, um, for a given uh, uh, mismatch here, you have only this deterioration of performance from the ideally ideal matched to 85, for example, here, this one. If you would choose one bit more for your segmentation, so you make the binary part a little bit more significant by one bit, you see that the degradation for the same error is more. And then for nine bits, it's even more because nine bits is by one bit more significant than eight. So for the same amount of degradation, if the binary bit is more significant, the hit that you take on the linearity of the whole DAC is more. You can also inverse the, uh, the reasoning and say, if I have a given requirement that I have to meet, for example, 85, what is 85 dB at the DAC? How much is the relative matching for the wire capacitance that I have to achieve? So you see that for less significant bit, the seven bit, you are allowed to have more mismatch, 24%. If you're within 24% matching, you're good. But then if the binary bit is by one bit more significant, B8, then your tolerance is 12%. If it's nine bit, it's 6%. So now how to choose the best segmentation is up to your skills as analog designer how well you can have the matching of the binary scaling. And this is how you make the choice of the segmentation. And say you make the, 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 the segmentation, say for example, uh, you choose for segmentation B8, so you have eight bits uh, binary part, and then you achieve your goal. Now, question is how you measure this goal? So what you do usually is that you put a full-scale sine wave, uh, digital sine wave at the input, single tone, and then you look at the spectrum, you measure, etc. But here the key is full-scale sine wave. Now, if you are in a back-off mode, which you need to do because of other components in your systems, then you will not apply a full-scale sine wave, you apply at the input something less. And this will have an impact on the effective segmentation that you use. So uh, let's see here what is the link between back-off and the dark segmentation. 
Here is an illustration of the dark segmentation in which we have uh, the thermometer uh, calls, the unary calling T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. So these germs in the uh, full scale range of the duct, they are realized by identical components. These are the unary components, the thermometer components. And then in between these steps, we have all the binary, all the binary, the least significant bits. Now, when we do this type of experiment to determine what is the optimal segmentation, usually we measure SFDR with a full scale input, which means that the sine wave goes from the maximum to the minimum level of that the duct can generate. So this is the full scale range. Now, if we are in a back off mode, we reduce the signal, we reduce the, the, the digital signal amplitude, and we effectively utilize only a certain portion of the full scale range of the duct, say half, for example, in this. So we are using only this in order to uh, limit the amplitude of the output signal. This will not be used. Now, what you see is that the effective segmentation changed. We are still using all binary bits for the least significant bits. So we are using all of them here and all of them here, while we threw away half of the unary bits. Um, because we are not using this thermometer bits and this thermometer bit unit, we don't use it. This means that the effective segmentation of our duct changed. And this changed because the amount of binary bits is still the same that we use while we reduce the um, thermometer, uh, thermometer units that we uh, use. You can say that the effective resolution of our duct decreased, uh, and this decrease is taken only by taking away unary bits, which means that the relative impact of binary uh, uh, bits increased, or the significance of the binary part increases in back of mode. This is uh, formalized in this graph, so we have the SFDR here and we have uh, the segmentation in this in this axis. On the left we have fully binary uh, DAC and on the right we have fully unary DAC. Thermometer DAC is a special case of unary DAC, of course. And then if you have a full scale signal for binary DAC you have low linearity. As you go to unary DAC, the linearity will improve very good, very well. And if you now back off here, what you see is that because the effective significance, relative significance of the binary part increases in back off region, this means that the linearity of your DAC will decrease. Now it is like a D to A conversion with a more significant, larger binary part. The more back off you do, the more you go towards binary converter, the lower its linearity becomes. So a practical guide how to make then uh, the decision for your segmentation is say you have a target for the linearity and based on your target, you make the decision for your segmentation. And say your segmentation here is 10 bits binary, 6 bits unary, for example. But now you know from the application that you will operate your D2A converter in a back-off mode. So if you're in a back-off mode, say by 6 dB, you are now with this true segmentation, you are in a point in which the binary part is more significant and hence the performance will deteriorate here. And you have to take it back, this performance. So this means that in this back off curve, you have to increase the relative portion of the unary segmentation, increase the relative portion of the binary segmentation so that you operate, you design your duct in this point, which in back off will give you the linearity that you want.
So, so the, mo uh, the, the most important messages of this slide is that um, if back office use the effective tax segmentation changes. All binary units are used while some, only some of the binary units are used, others are just thrown away. So the effective segmentation becomes more binary. Now, now let's conclude the podcast. What we discussed is that uh, in communication, the uh, the quality of communication depends, of course, on the transmit power, so we want more more power, but also on the quality of the signal, which is bandwidth and linearity. And then, particularly, the linearity depends on the components that we use, depends on the signal power. The more power we have, the more compression we have in our electronic uh, components, the more the linearity will deteriorate, the more distortion we will have in our system, and then we will, have, we will um, deteriorate the quality of the signal. The other very important uh, um, mechanism which determines the linearity comes from a dig the digital to analog converter and its choice on segmentation. The more binary, Segmentation we use, the more efficient our converter is, but the more matching problems it has and the less the linearity. The more unary segmentation we use, uh, the more resources we have to uh, use. Uh, it's an efficient solution, but the, the linearity is superior. When we consider to do back off, which is intentionally reducing the signal power to improve linearity, we have to take into account that it changes the effective segmentation of the DAC. So we would use back off in power amplifiers, for example, to get the linearity. But this means, back off for digital tunnel converters means that you reduce the linearity. Hence, in the design of the D2A converter, you have to take into account if a back off mode is used, you have to compensate the heat that you take in uh, linearity by moving more to the binary part by considering a segmentation which goes more to the unary uh, uh, bits. So, this is what I wanted to explain you about uh, uh, back off. Thank you very much for your consideration, for your attention, and see you next time. Bye bye.